Is this like visible, Bhavan? Visible, sir. Okay, fine. Thank you. Bhavan, are you there? Sir, I, yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, okay. Just, just make sure that if my voice breaks or you know if my slides are not moving, please intimate. Yes, sir. Yes. Don't worry. So, Pawan, uh, I think uh, we should start. Uh, already, you know, 62 participants are waiting. So, we'll start. Pawan? Sir, yes, you can start. Sir, please start the session. I'm just, I'm just sharing my screen again. Okay. And I hope it's visible now. It is visible, sir. Okay. Are the slides changing? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pawan.
so uh, very good evening to all the workshop participants as well as uh, some of the mentors who have joined uh, in this late evening uh, so um, by now i hope uh, all of you would have formed uh, your uh, small groups and uh, you would have identified your mentors as well as our team member along with dr padi and uh, some of you uh, i mean most of you have already you know chosen your uh, area of interest and you have started working on that and some of the groups have already started uh, i mean already completed framing uh, research questions which is a very positive and uh, uh, good attitude so i congratulate them and uh, uh, during the course of uh, the interaction uh, which i had and which i was able to participate in the small group discussions uh, some of them have expressed uh, concerns related to formulating or identifying a research question itself uh how to uh, how to work? yes dr priyanka yes sir Sorry, yeah sir. you want to say something so by mistake i had unmuted sorry sir okay fine okay uh, no issues so i was just telling uh, the i i mean we got some queries regarding the formulation of research question and how to identify a proper uh, you know area of uh, research how do we know that this is a uh, area this this has scope or this has gap uh, where we can work uh, in relation to systematic review and meta analysis so uh, even though today's topic is on uh, uh, exactly the uh, topic of discussion is on pico only uh, i thought i'll just give some brief uh, introduction and note on research question because anyways pico and research questions are connected so if you can understand the research question and uh, in addition to that uh, how to identify a research question and uh, and i'll also be telling you some of the places where to look for these uh, uh, research questions uh, i think that would be helpful for you to understand uh, the pico as well and once you know how to formulate or how to uh, how, how to split your research question into pico then your prospero registration will be very simpler and very easier uh not about it will it will just be a matter of 15 20 minutes uh, which again will be taken in uh, detail by dr uh, akib in tomorrow's session so i hope uh, with this uh, uh, you know brief background on uh, today's session uh, i'll just uh, go into the uh, session proper and uh, the objectives of today's session will be to know uh, what is a research question and how to formulate a, a proper research question for various uh, study designs in Uh, sorry uh, various systematic reviews involving various study designs uh, as well as to split the research question or to frame your pico statement which is essential for you to continue with your research uh, the next step uh, next step in your research after identifying your research question will be searching the relevant articles and searching and identifying the relevant articles now how do you search that that depends on your pico only so uh, with this uh, we'll just move on to the session itself so uh, many of you would have i mean uh, most of you are already experienced uh, uh, in the department i mean in the field of community medicine and public health and some of you are uh, already faculty so i don't need to explain uh, to you what is meant by research question in general uh, however there are some uh, what you can say there are some differences with regards to research question in terms of primary research and uh, uh, systematic review and uh, uh the meta analysis even though uh, the answer will be the same for example what is the effect of uh, electronic uh, nicotine delivery system on smoking cessation so this can be done as a uh, primary research as well as secondary research however the uh, the scope the quantum of uh, uh, the scope of research actually differs now why is it important in any case or in any uh, research only if you have a answerable answerable question will be able to quantify our outcomes and uh, uh, i would say the most important part of uh, systematic review or for that matter any research is to have research question if your if our question itself is wrong no matter how how robust our uh, methodology is or uh, you can say how much effort or how much uh, time you put into that particular uh, research the output will not be correct or the output will not be Uh, what you can say uh, will not be uh, to the uh, expectation in the sense that uh, um, 
what you can say uh, it won't be apt or it won't be interesting for uh, the particular uh, population or the target population so it is essential to have a proper research question and uh, how can we say whether a research question is proper or not again we have certain objective criteria to assess whether our research question is proper or not and uh, we use an abbreviation called as finer which is feasible interesting novel ethical and relevant so whenever you choose a research question just pass uh, you know assess through this uh, five uh, five criteria which i have mentioned here whether the research question is feasible for example in our case uh, uh, since most of you especially the mentees uh, this will this might be your first systematic review and meta analysis so you have to choose a research question which is which will be feasible for you a person or a team who is doing cochrane reviews they are experienced and they will choose research question accordingly so feasibility is the first criteria so what is feasible or what is possible for your team that is the most imp- that that is the first criteria when you are choosing a research question for example you can see the what is the what is the pre- uh, i'm just giving you an example so uh, one of the uh, research question which i got was that what is the prevalence of uh, dental caries in uh, student uh, you know school going children so this is a very simple and straightforward question it is feasible uh, so this is an example for feasibility criteria of research question not just that the second criteria is it should be interesting it should be interesting for you as well as for the uh, you know target population target population means the it can your target population can be the government your target population uh, can be some uh, ngo sorry uh, not ngo uh, some organization who is funding that particular research so uh, sorry am i not audible yes, yes you are audible yeah audible. So what do you think, audible. So, okay okay sorry i think uh, the then the issue is from uh, the participant side or uh, one who commented so uh, so continuing on it so uh, the research question should be interesting first and foremost it should be interesting for you because you are the one who is going to conduct it and uh, second and, uh, and simultaneously it should be interest- interesting for your target population uh, there comes your uh, and, and 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 the third criteria novelty in fact Uh, the criteria of interesting novelty and relevancy these are all interrelated your research should be novel there is no point in uh, you know repeating the uh, you know answer for the sorry re- repeating the same question which has been already answered if someone has already done a, a research on the prevalence of uh, dental caries in school children i mean just recently last year if you have a meta analysis published on the same aspect then there is no point in doing that yes there, there may be you can do an update but that will not be your research per se that will be you are just topping up or you are updating someone else's meta analysis and it would be i would say it would be ethically and ideally good for that author to do the update since they have you know already they are already working on it it is ethically on their part to do the update however you can also update when uh, if you are identifying uh, a particular systematic review is old enough older for example 3 uh, years 5 years ho gaya Uh, even then there is no update on that and you are seeing that many studies have come after that then you can do a you can register yourself or you can approach the first author of that particular research and you can ask them to uh, uh, get a consent from them or you can register fresh in prospera so the concept of novelty is very important especially when you are appealing to your stakeholder as well as from publication point of view no journal will publish Uh, uh, if this if there's something if, if there is not something new in your meta analysis again uh, and and novelty in the sense it's not only about the disease condition you are talking about it can be at least any one novel feature should be there at either either it should be your uh, you know study population interventions dosages um, or you can say the age group uh, population within population age group or a particular Uh, a population with certain disease conditions or it can be methodological uh, novelty uh, you 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 would have identified a systematic review and meta analysis but their methodology would have been very poor uh, they might have acknowledged it or not acknowledged it then you can uh, you know assess those limitations and then you can uh, conduct a systematic review and meta analysis stating your rationality that okay these were the issues 
in the past and I am rectifying this in my meta-analysis. Then you can continue it. Uh, continue it. So, the concept of novelty and relevance, relevance means relevant to the current context. That is also very important. Uh, all these things goes into your introduction actually. Uh, novelty, interesting novelty and relevancy goes into your building the case for your meta-analysis, which is your introduction part. Why are you doing this research in the first place? And uh, one other important criteria is ethical and uh, all the research should be ethical and that also goes into uh, uh, framing your research question for uh, systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, so whenever you are framing a research question, make sure that all these five, five criteria five criteria are satisfied. Only then your research question will be valuable for your the stakeholders, uh, for the public, as well as for publication purpose. So I hope I am clear about uh, uh, research questions and it's, uh, uh, you know, how a research question should be. Is it clear or do you have any doubts in this particular aspect? You can chat, you can post as comments in the box or you can just unmute and you can ask the question. I just want to make sure that before moving on, this portion is clear. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, before moving on to, you know, uh, how to frame a proper research question. Okay, I'll just move on to that part. I'll come to the sources or uh, some of the examples, I mean, some of the areas. Uh, where you can look for a research question uh, later. So based on these criteria, uh, I have given some of the examples. Again, broadly, you can divide the studies into observational uh, descriptive or observational prevalence studies, observational analytical studies and interventional studies. So here I have given some of the examples which we have worked and we are working on actually. Uh, for example, in the observational prevalence study, so this is, uh, this is the paper which got accepted recently from our team. So this was the research question which we formulated. What is the prevalence of oral manifestations in MPOX patients? Now, if you apply those five criteria, every uh, all of the five criteria will be satisfying. It is it was feasible for our team to do. It was uh, we were only five six people and the studies were limited and it was a prevalence study and we were expert uh, we were expert in doing that. So it was feasible for us to do easily and it was interesting exactly. It was interesting as well as relevant in the context of monkeypox because that is a kind of ongoing pandemic. So, and uh, related to the interesting and novel part, yes, it was novel because no other uh, meta-analysis or systematic review was conducted exclusively for oral manifestations. However, we also identified one uh, meta-analysis where they, uh, you know, conducted, uh, uh, where they included all the overall symptomat symptomatology, rashes, fever, in which oral manifestation was also a part However, uh, we found out the gap that they did not present sightwise manifestation. For example, what was the manifestation, oral manifestation in the mouth? What was the manifestation in the tongue? What was in the oropharynx? So this was not, uh, you know, reported by them. So this is how we identified. This is how we identified the novelty or we explained the novelty in our meta-analysis. Uh, and uh, yes, ethically it was, uh, uh, ethically also it satisfied, the research question satisfied the context. And uh, the second example is, uh, which we are currently working on is, what is the mortality rate of uh, cirrhosis patients with frailty? Frailty is a concept uh, which is uh, usually associated with geriatrics, but it is also uh, being associated with uh, uh, largely these days with chronic diseases, wherein uh, it's, it's an overall comprehensive concept, wherein your body, uh, due to aging process, uh, your body shuts down in the aspects of immu uh, immunity and uh, you'll be prone for diseases. So that is a, that is a concept of frailty. So we are working on this concept of mortality rate of cirrhosis patients with frailty. Now, here again, it is a simple descriptive study. However, no study has been conducted on this. No, sorry, no um, systematic review or meta-analysis has been conducted in this area. So novelty is very important criteria which has been satisfied here. These are all some of the examples for framing the descriptive or prevalence study based, uh, prevalence study oriented research questions. Now, moving on to the, some of the observational analytical studies. Now, I, I'm just expanding the, uh, the descriptive question and I'm just making it into a analytical question. So in any analytical study, you'll be having a comparison group. 
Now, if I want to do a systematic review and meta analysis, taking uh, this mortality and frailty concept uh, itself, uh, so I want to see what is the effect of frailty on mortality among the patients with cirrhosis. So it's a straightforward question. What is the effect of frailty on mortality among the patients with uh, cirrhosis? So this will be my question for uh, the systematic review which I am planning on an analytical study where I want to know how much effect or how, what is the impact of frailty on fatality among the patients with cirrhosis. Similarly, uh, the second question actually I have taken uh, from one of the subgroups only uh, which was actually interesting and uh, uh, I hope they are working on it. Uh, it's not finalized but it is a very good uh, research question. So what is the effect of artificial sweetness on the cardiovascular disease among the adults? So this is a, uh, another example, very good example for uh, systematic review and uh, meta-analysis on observational analytical studies. So the key word here is actually effect or impact. So that is how uh, we can differentiate between uh, descriptive and uh, uh, the cross, sorry, the analytical studies. So these are all some of the examples for how to, how to frame a good research question with regards to analytical studies that are of observational in nature. Uh, and uh, mostly this observational analytical studies uh, are applicable uh, for environmental, nutritional uh, aspects as well as diseases. But uh, majority of the cases, we apply these anal observational analytical, analytical studies is in environmental and nutrition related research. So those who are working on uh, uh, environment and nutrition, they can uh, go for these observational analytical studies. Uh, now, uh, the another important component, in fact, the most important uh, component of uh, systematic review and meta-analysis, including interventional studies. In fact, the, uh, the Cochrane review actually does only on interventional studies mostly. So uh, one example which I have given is uh, one of the systematic review and meta-analysis which we published uh, last year uh, as an collab international collaborative project. So it was on the relationship between probiotics and depression. So what we conducted was what was the effect of probiotics on depression and anxiety, but you can split them into two. Again, this question can be split into two, one which I have displayed in front of you. What is the effect of probiotics on depression? Uh, and what is the effect of probiotics on anxiety? It is very simple. Now, uh, the expansion of this research question will come in the PICO component. How to expand or how to split your research question that we will discuss during the PICO, comp uh, sorry, uh, when we are talking about the PICO aspect of the research question or the systematic review and meta-analysis. So, uh, these are all some of the examples uh, which, uh, which, some of the examples which have been published uh, related to the related to framing research questions in descriptive, observational analytical and interventional studies. Now, uh, I just want to give some of the examples which uh, again, which came from the group. Uh, so, uh, since most of the, uh, most of them are uh, newbies and uh, you are learning the systematic review and meta-analysis, I would also suggest to go for the descriptive studies, prevalence studies uh, uh, as your first choice of uh, research question. Because uh, that will be, a, uh, I mean, the, uh, the analytical studies, the data extraction, all these things will be a little difficult. Uh, I'm not discouraging you. I'm just, since you are starting, I would advise you to go for as much as possible for a descriptive prevalence study based systematic review and meta-analysis. So this was one good example, which, uh, which uh, you know, to only today evening, uh, uh, one of the group, I, sorry, I don't remember the name. So one of the groups, uh, they sent me this. Uh, what is the prevalence of intimate partner violence among LGBT community. So this is a very good and a very straightforward. It's a novel. Uh, I mean novelty. I have to check. I cannot uh, comment on that part. However, it is very interesting because it is concerned with the uh, marginalized section on whom not much of the research in itself is not being done. So it is interesting and it is relevant to the context because LGBT uh, QA rights are being talked in um, uh, talked more and more, especially in India as well as uh, uh, across the world. But in India recently the rights and uh, you know uh, health related aspects of lgbtq are being largely talked in uh, health as well as in legal areas so this is a very relevant question and ethically also it is correct in order to because marginalized people should be uh, the research on marginalized people should be expanded and uh, increased so this is a very good question with regards to novelty yes they have to work and check whether it is novel or not 
Now again, uh, there was another second uh, probable question sent by them. What is the prevalence of domestic violence among the same sex couples? Again, this is a this is a, I would say this is a untouched area, but again the novelty should be checked based on the existing literature, which is uh, which I feel is a very straightforward and a very good uh, uh, you know descriptive uh, question for systematic review and meta analysis. So these are some of the <clears throat> examples which I came across uh, from our subgroups only, and uh, like I was telling, I would like to show you some of the areas where you can uh, you know go for and look. Uh, go and look for the current trends or uh, uh, you know uh, the research questions that are of relevant to the current context so is my uh, google chrome visible is it visible yes. 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 see uh, there are multiple uh, places where you can search everything obviously everything is in the website only uh, sorry online only so WHO is one very good site where you can go and uh, search for their research priorities in each area. They have research priorities for multiple, uh, you know, areas and uh, there will be some review articles. There are review articles per se working on uh, what are the research questions that are, uh, pri that are prioritized in the current context. So they, this is one such article which I took. So here they have listed out, uh, uh, they have prioritized the research related to the NCDs, non-communicable diseases. Uh, most of them looks like, uh, you know, direct, uh, you know, primary research questions, but you can take out the, uh, your uh, systematic review and meta-analysis questions from here. And actually these are areas. Under each area, there are multiple research questions. Okay. For example, if you just take this, uh, what interventions are effective in empowering primary physicians and healthcare workers to prioritize early diagnosis of NCDs among their patients? So they are talking about multiple, <coughs> sorry, multiple interventions. So you can go into this area and you can identify one intervention which is being, uh, you know, uh, which is being implemented and the outcomes being seen. Similarly, every area has multiple research questions. So you can identify according to your area of interest from uh, review articles like this where they have, where they specifically talk about research questions and priority. This is in relation to India. You can find according to LMICs, low and middle income countries. You can find according to the overall world. So, according geography wise, also you can identify research questions. Similarly, there is another. There was another article which, uh, which was also very relevant. I would say. So they have. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I hope this uh, this article is visible. Research priorities in non-communicable diseases in developing countries. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So as you can see, they have outlined uh, very clearly. So first, uh, out, first key point is define best practices by evaluating the effectiveness of clinical and community-based intervention. So they are, they are talking about clinical and community-based interventions and what is the best intervention. So you can identify that and you can uh, conduct a uh, you know, sorry, systematic review and meta-analysis on the on its effectiveness. Uh, similarly, each of these points are also. Uh, uh, you know has multiple potential research questions and uh, similarly if you go into the articles especially lancet uh, you know jama like things you have to look into their uh, you know especially the conclusion part uh, it may be systematic review or it may be the uh, uh, sorry it may be uh, your primary uh, data based uh, research so you have to look into their recommendations as well as their uh, you know their outcomes uh, the things which they have studied and especially you have to uh, identify the articles which have been published very recently, especially last three, four months. Uh, that may, I mean, uh, that is just to know what is the current topic. If, if it is being published in such, uh, you know, high impact journals, it means that the scope and, uh, you know, the context is very relevant. So you can identify those articles and you can, uh, you can, uh, you can search for any relevant articles or whether systematic review or uh, meta analysis has been conducted in this particular topic. Uh, this is this has already been you know intimated to you by Dr. Padi during the initial part of the uh, of this uh, pre workshop series. So I'm just reiterating that go to the journals, go to the you know big uh, high impact journals, uh, identify the latest articles that are published in last three four months, identify a topic, then search for or uh, go into the cross referencing uh, uh, referencing list in the same article, or go for another uh, PubMed search and identify similar research. And if you find that 
no you know systematic review or meta analysis have been conducted so far and uh, it is a, it is also your area of interest then you can very well go for it because the chances for acceptance is very high with related to those articles so uh, is it clear about research questions how to frame research questions and uh, what are, how to look for or uh, where to look for uh, to identify a proper research question dr arvind can you say some uh... Dr. Arvind, yeah, yes, hi. Uh, so th um, the la latter part is clear. Like Sir had already explained the Lancet, and usually they'll be describing the initial part where you were saying the priority uh, of the research question. I didn't get that part. Like, can you repeat? Like um, three sides ago, you were talking about priority questions in the research. So how do we uh, like? Uh, yeah, yes. So yeah, you are you are talking about this, right? Yes, and uh, okay. And a, yeah, the slide and all a, a slide prior to that. So how how do we exactly get to f figuring out? Uh, do we have to look for the uh, articles where they are just talking about these should be the priority in future, or how do we get to it? I, I'm sorry, I did not get this part. Yeah. So basically, first you have to look for those specific articles. Okay. Specific. You have to look for those specific review articles that mm -hmm. talk about research priority only. Okay. In your area. Okay. Okay. So after you search for it, you will be able to easily get it. That's not a very big deal. And you have to see, I mean, ensure that it is for latest. It should okay. be at least only last two years, at least last two or three years. The update should not be old okay. because research priorities also change, but not for at least five years. Okay. Okay. So once you make sure that, okay, it is the latest research priority related article in your area. Okay. Okay. Then they would have prioritized the areas like this. Can you see this? Yes. Priorities, top five priorities, top 10 priorities. Okay. Okay. So you have to, I mean, uh, higher the priority, more valuabilities. Okay. Okay. And uh, so within that, you can go, for example, I'm just going into this. This is, can you see the question number nine? Yes. Which interventions are effective in preventing tobacco use among adolescents? So now I know that. Okay, preventing tobacco use among adolescents is a priority area. Okay. Okay. And uh, and the, the research area they have mentioned is they are trying to identify the intervention. Now there will be many interventions that have been yes. ongoing. Yes. Okay. Now you have to identify one intervention in which at least three or four studies have been conducted okay. and the outcome has been seen. Okay. So like we have okay. to mix, mix and match permutation and combination after looking at an article like this and go for a search. And this, see whether this, that's research priority, this research priority or the research priority area is just to make sure that the question is interesting, relevant, and novel. Okay, sir. Thank if you. If you take from this, the chances are very high. But novelty again, you have to check if someone has already published a systematic review and meta analysis, yes. then uh, you have to go for something else. Yes, thank you so much. It's a, it's, it's a sequence step. So I would say this you can keep this as your first step. Okay. Yes. Okay. To narrow down your area of search. That is my point. Okay. Thank you. And uh, yeah, someone was posting a comment. Dr. Imani, oh, uh, can I ask you a question? Yes, please, doctor. Uh, regarding this uh, research, do we need to submit our uh, project to the institutional ethics policy uh, committee? Whatever uh, you're doing now. Uh, Padi would have clarified this in his yesterday's class. Uh, systematic review on meta analysis, uh, 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 we are not uh, directly dealing with the patients. However, uh, we will clarify this once again after discussing with Dr. Padi. It is exempted, it is waiver is there, that is for sure. However, whether to submit or to uh, get that waiver from the ethics committee or not, uh, we'll just a we'll get a clarification from Dr. Padi because he was the one who was dealing with ethical aspects yesterday. Uh, yes. If anyone else uh, who attended yesterday's class can clarify. No, I did attend, but it I don't think it was mentioned. Okay, you you have raised a very you know valid point, and it is uh, uh, correct. Uh, according to the ICMR guidelines, there is a point that the they are exempted. Systematic reviews are exempted. However, the exemption should come from the ethics committee. So we'll just uh, I'll just uh, uh, discuss with Dr. Padi, and we'll give you clarifications on this. Is sure, that sir, uh, thank, fine you. thank you? Thank you. No, One thing is clear, it is exempted. It is exempted for sure. However, uh, the current ICMR guidelines says that the exemption should come from the IEC. Sir, I have so, a question. Uh, Thank you. Yes. 
So how to yes. be sure our research question has not been done earlier? Like where all we have to search? Uh, see PubMed, PubMed, Scopus, Cochrane. Okay. These three are the major. Uh, uh, I mean, there are other databases as well. Embase is there, Sinal is there, but PubMed covers most of the uh, most of our uh, you know health related uh, things. Like we were, since... we were we were searching on Prospero, so we have to do PubMed search also. No, no, Prospero is for registration only. Okay. Prospero, uh, see, they might have registered, they would not have even conducted it. Okay. There are a lot of, uh, you know, things like that. Prospero, I, I agree, Prospero is, uh, is also a site. I am talking about publish. Unless you publish, it, it, it has no meaning. Just because you have registered, uh, it uh, does not make anything. Okay. So, PubMed, Scopus, since we are also dealing with environment, nutrition, and social science related things, Scopus should also be done. And Cochrane for high quality reviews, Cochrane would have already been uh, all the mostly intervention studies would have been conducted in Cochrane, especially if you are uh, trying to go for an interventional aspect, then uh, uh, you should uh, do a Cochrane uh, search. Okay. However, PubMed will give you include Cochrane as well, but then uh, PubMed will cover all these observational descriptive studies, whatever that has been done related to. Okay, that. thank you. Uh, so, so, sir, my question is regarding the priority areas which you were just telling. Uh, this kind of table is has been published in some of the in one journal or website or uh, I mean uh, I mean this is a tabulated form. All the priority no, areas. No, this is from a, this is from a journal as you can see BMC Health Research Policy and Systems, and uh, this is a table in that article. This is a consolidated version. Okay. The, type, the title of the research is this, a research agenda for non-communicable disease prevention and control in India. This is the article title. I have shown you the essence of the article. This is the okay. essence of the article, the table, output, okay. output of the article. Yes. Uh, so, sir. okay. So, I, yes. Uh, I'm Dr. Srikant, sir, from Ames Patna. Actually, I also had the same question. So suppose I'm from pathology and I'm, uh, I'm looking for such uh, priority questions. So can I also Google it for the top priority questions and get something this like this table? Yes, you can, you can say simple Google search will not yield uh, very good results, but you can do a Google search, uh, but system. I mean, if you want to have a proper thing, go for a permit search. Okay, so uh, is there is there something where we will get this top uh, priority of the you know top priority questions or things see, like that? Uh, see, top priority can be subject wise or disease wise. Even okay. within, I mean, NCD related pathological aspects can also be studied, right? Right. So, so uh, it can be you know subject specialty specific. Uh, uh, your organization, your uh, what you can say, uh, I mean, uh, your associations or. Uh, do you have any uh, organizations for pathologists? Yes, sir. Too many of them. IARC, IARC is there, no? IARC would have research question, research priorities for you. IARC, so institute research. Uh, okay. inter international, uh, I think that is related to cancer research. Uh -huh. International, uh, 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 I mean, I'm not getting the expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, if anyone can expand it, it would be good uh, IARC. In, in, in the uh, international uh, agency uh, for research uh, in cancer. Uh, IARC exactly, you are talking exactly. about, okay. Exactly. It's international. Uh, is a so very good. Reports. Or you can say the apex body for cancer related research hmm. and uh, the ones who are working in radiology, radiotherapy and pathology. Just right. go to their sites. They would have had a lot of, they, they, they will be having it. Okay. Right. Sir. Okay. Thank so you. we'll just move on. Uh, if you have any other questions, we can take okay. it up at the end as well. I just want to go into the topic, uh, exact topic of today, Pico. Uh, sir, I have a so, question. Yes, doctor. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, what we, what I understand is we'll try to find a research question, which is a simple one, like uh, to find out the prevalence or incidence like that. And uh, yes. if, if we narrow down our research question so that it becomes a uh, unique, like as you have narrated one uh, example, like uh, uh, you were interested in finding out the oropharyngeal manifestation of the monkeypox. So yes. uh, uh, we, uh, it is possible that we won't find any article in the Apex Journal like uh, JAMA or Lancet 
uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, emphasized by Dr. Pati yesterday. So what okay. should we do in that case? See, uh, uh, that, uh, sir, uh, Dr. Pati mentioned that for identifying your research question only, right? So I have, I have outlined some uh, two, three ways on how to identify the research question. So one thing is, uh, that is the third option, which I, uh, which I said, which Dr. Padi also mentioned, going into the high impact journals and identifying the articles. Okay? okay. Second thing is that research priority, according to the research priority that has already been set by the apex bodies. Okay. Right. Uh, is this what you are asking or you are asking something else? Yeah, uh, means I'm asking uh, the same question means uh, uh, to find out the research question, which has which has not been done. Uh, that is a very difficult task. So, yeah, I agree doctor that 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 that's what I was trying to explain. I think someone else also asked it. So once you find the research priority area, I mean, after you identify, okay, this is a this is a hot topic. Then you have to do a PubMed search. How, what is right. the research that has been conducted? So. A simple search, not a very systematic search, okay. But at least some simple search in PubMed to identify the current. Uh, I mean, what is what has already been published or not? You have to make sure at least uh, I know three four articles are there no, and uh, no systematic review. On... Yes. Yeah. So so what do I understand is I think we should do uh, both the activities simultaneously. Means we should search on the PubMed as well. They as complement we also... each other, doctor. It's it's not a, it's not a, what you can say. It's not okay. I have completed this. No, I will go further. No, I, you will identify a rough research question. You will do a search. You will refine your research question. You understand? No, what do I say, sir? Means if we do this activity simultaneously, means finding the research question, finding the topics uh, in the PubMed, and at the same time, we uh, search in the Prospero as well. So that okay. you know, uh, entire day we spend to come up with a research question, and at the end of the day, we find that the same topic has already been done by some another another researcher. Prospero is not for searching the. I know Prospero is not day, for doctor. Prospero is not for uh, search. It's not a search engine, but whatever research question we come up with, if that research question has been taken up by someone else. Then entire exercise is uh, will go in vain. No, no, it's it's not like that. Actually, Dr. Padi can you know uh, give you much clarity on this. He has registered a lot of topics, but many people have already uh, you know after uh, him registering it, they have conducted it and they have published it. So this is Prospero registration being done by someone else. I cannot you know do research on that. It's nothing like that. And in fact, Prosper registration is not even mandatory for prevalence, uh, uh, prevalence study based observation, sorry, observation study based uh, systematic review and meta analysis. Uh, okay. Uh, but again, your point is well taken. Your apprehension is uh, understood. Again, uh, I think this is again uh, can be better clarified by Dr. Padi. Yes. Okay. So we'll we'll post it in the group Thanks. or we'll take it up during the tomorrow session. So he is not available today actually. Yeah, uh, thank you. So this will be clarified in tomorrow's session or during, I mean, as a message in the group itself. Yes. Yeah, sure. But uh, like I was telling, you will be having a rough research question. Then you do a simple PubMed search and you can refine it. So this is how it works. Right, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just move on to the next one. That is the PICO. Uh, and again, most of you would have already know what is PICO and you would have used it or you would have heard it. So this is nothing but splitting the research question in order to uh, in order to identify uh, in order to uh, build a proper uh, search uh, search strategy as well as identifying the eligible eligible studies. So once you have a refined research question, PICO comes the next step. So what exactly is PICO? Again, it's a it's, it's an acronym. So PICO means Population, intervention, comparison, and outcomes. So this is the expansion for PICO. And uh, in, uh, in, in common parlance or in uh, common context, we actually include a component of yes, that is study design. What study designs we want to include in our research, uh, sorry, systematic review and meta-analysis. So these days we are actually using PICO's, PICO's format, which is PICO plus study design, which study design we are including, whether we are including only the cross-sectional study, whether we are including 
prospective cohort or whether we are including retrospective as well or whether we are including only the RCTs or non-randomized uh, control trials. So that, that is what study design mean. Uh, then we have another uh, kind of a modified version of PICO called as PICO, which is used, uh, which is applied in observational analytical studies. Uh, instead of intervention, here we use exposure. Now, what do you mean by population? Population means the study population in, in whom we are, or uh, the uh, population of interest in which we are trying to find out the outcome. So that is what population is. Intervention means our intervention of interest, the effect of a particular intervention which we want to study. That is what intervention means. Comparison means, comparison can be with the existing standard treatment or it can be placebo. So that is what comparison group. Outcome means what, what, what are we trying to study? What uh, uh, the effect, the quantifiable effect is called as outcomes. And uh, PECO in exposure instead of intervention, we'll be just seeing the exposure. And especially this is applicable for nutrition and uh, environment related studies. Uh, <clears throat> this PECO concept is applicable. All the observational analytical studies will be having the PECO concept. So this is this is what uh, what is the expansion of PECO or PECO and the individual components of PECO. Uh, uh, you will be understanding it better when I'm giving you examples. So first example, let us take the prevalence study, descriptive study itself. Again, uh, we'll just I'm just taking this example which we are working on. So what is the prevalence of mortality among cirrhosis patient with frailty? So this is my refined research question. Now, this is a descriptive question. In descriptive question, we won't be having in uh, sorry intervention or comparator group. So it will be only the population and the outcome straight away. This should be very clear. In descriptive cross-section studies, we won't be having the INC component. It will be only participants and outcomes. So don't worry if you uh, uh, if you won't be able to do the INC, you need not do it because it is not applicable. So in this case, as you can see, the participants are the universe. We say universe. The universe is cirrhosis patients with frailty. And uh, uh, here we have already we ha I have also displayed. Another important step in doing the research, which is uh, framing your inclusion exclusion criteria, which will be again uh, very useful for you in registering, Prospero registering, as well as uh, framing your search strategies. So participants are uh, cirrhosis patients with frailty. I'll be including patients from all genders and all age groups, no exclusion in that aspect. However, I'll be excluding suspected or probable cirrhosis patients with frailty. So only the confirmed cirrhosis patients I will be taking. So that is the exclusion and inclusion criteria. Uh, so this inclusion and exclusion criteria will be applied for all individual components of the PICO. So since here we are using participants and outcomes, I have applied it for these two inclusion and exclusion. You can also make a table similar to this. It will be useful in this aspect. Now what is the outcome? That is also very straightforward here. So which is the prevalence of mortality. So that is my outcome, uh, which uh, we have also saw another secondary objective, which was prevalence of hospitalization. That is why that has also been added here. So, but the primary objective is prevalence of mortality. So here, mortality is the outcome and prevalence of, uh, and in mortality, I'm saying the prevalence, or you can say mortality rate. So this is my outcome and exclusion criteria is, I'm uh, leaving out all the risk factors for mortality and hospitalization. I'm bothered only about the prevalence I am not bothered about the studies which are reporting about the risk factors. Okay, so this is how you have to uh, split your uh, research question into PICO format and you have to again explain it by making, by explicitly describing your inclusion and exclusion criteria. And lastly, like I have said, your study designs. What are all the study design I will be including? So we included all the study design, prevalence studies, case series, cross-sectional, cohort, case control, and service. Here we have mentioned cohort studies and case control because even though they are following it up, we'll be taking only the arm which has frailty patient. So in that aspect, we have included cohort studies here. However, in exclusion, as you can see, qualitative, policy, opinion, case studies, and case reports were excluded in this because to have a prevalence study, I need a denominator which is not possible in case reports. <clears throat> so these are the components of PICO 
or uh, PO with related to uh, in context of prevalence or descriptive studies. Now, uh, this is another, this is again a example for uh, descriptive study based uh, PICO only, uh, which was done for our oral manifestation study. What is the prevalence of various oral manifestations in patient with MPOX? Now, you can, you, can, you can divide this participants into participant in disease as well. So, in this case, we, can, we have divided it into laboratory confirmed patients with MPOX. So, that is our participants and the disease or the condition which we are studying is oral manifestations among them and you have to list out what are the exact oral manifestations you are looking. So, all things should be explicitly and detailedly mentioned in this inclusion and exclusion criteria and the outcome was prevalence of oral manifestation. So, it can uh, the point here is that participants can be split into uh, participants and disease as well which is also accepted by the journals. Uh, rest of the things are similar to the previous example. So, is it clear? How, how do you make a, a PICO, uh, how do you split the research question into PICO for descriptive studies? Sir, wh what about the comparator component? Yeah, th this is a descriptive study. See, a comparator or intervention, that I and C component will come only in the, your analytical studies. Can be observational analytical or interventional studies. The, in prevalence and uh, descriptive studies, you need not bother about INC because it will not be available. So, the only applicable components under PICO for descriptive study is P and O. Okay, sir. Okay. So, moving on, we are going into the analytical studies. So, taking the same example, what is the effect of frailty and mortality among the patients with cirrhosis? So, here our uh, population studied is cirrhotic patients. And our exposure is frailty, patients with frailty, which is frailty actually. And the comparator, comparator group is patients who did not have frailty. So, the, those are the ones uh, who will be taken as comparator in this. And <clears throat> outcomes. So, what is the outcome in our case? We are studying the effect on mortality. So, that will be our outcome, mortality or fatality. And finally, the study design. So, we will be taking only the prospective cohort studies. So, this is how. Uh, this is PECO format actually, if you can see it is exposure. Like I said earlier, all the observational analytical studies will be having PECO format. Instead of intervention, we are using exposure here. So, this is how you have to split or you have to formulate your PECO statement based on your research question for analytical studies, observational analytical studies. Is it clear? Sir, I have a question. Yes, uh, sir. If the exposure and outcome, the outcome are the same, uh, like for a case control study and for a core study, if the exposure and outcome are the same, so can I include both types types of study in a, matlab, in a systematic review meta analysis? No, no, you have to give me an example, no. Uh, sir, like uh, you like, cannot combine case control and prospective. Okay, 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 okay. Like I need to have. PO cohort studies together and case control studies uh, together. Because, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, because of the odds ratio and random risk component. Yeah, uh, case control reports your odds ratio. The uh, you know, yes, measure yes. of association itself differs. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. That is That's the outcome. The measure of, I mean, here we are talking about fundamentals, yes. which I mean, the measure of outcomes will be discussed later. Uh, uh, at that time, you will be knowing, but then for your information set, the outcome itself is different in that uh, mortality. We'll be studying in terms of risk ratio or odds ratio only, no? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, that is why you have to explicitly mention the study designs. Uh, actually, uh, yes, sir, yes. Sir. Like, actually, the, the the confusion I had, like, I was planning something on uh, that, uh, like, childhood uh, trauma and childhood, and which develops to any mental illness later. So, like, if okay. I plan a case control study with the people who are already, like, impacted with mental illness, and I go for a case control study, with the with the exposure of uh, trauma in the childhood, and I can also play oh. in a case control study, a cohort study for that. Like if I follow up a people of uh, people but of that if age, they have, if they have reported odds ratio, then maybe you can include it. But then you have to explicitly mention that. But I don't think uh, cohort studies are reporting odds ratio only. Re in very rare cases, in very rare cases, uh, they report odds ratio. Because related. risk ratio is better measure. Why would I go for odds ratio in yes, my per primary obvious publication? Obvious. Obviously, yeah, so, obviously. I mean, yes, uh, you can, but then uh, uh, I don't, I, it's not advisable. Again, a, a prospective cohort is a level above. 
the okay. case control suite. You are mixing two designs of different yes. quality. Okay, so that was the question, sir. Can I mix both? That is another them? issue. Thank okay, you. thank you for the question. Yes. So uh, the next uh, again uh, example, uh, I have just expanded the question which was given by the uh, our subgroup only. So what is the effect uh, of? Artificial? I have a doubt. Uh, can I ask? Uh, yes, doctor, please. Yeah, actually, uh, like in this, you are saying it's prospective cohort, but if we do a meta analysis and systemic review, it it would be only when the studies have been done. So it would be a re retrospective cohort in that case or not? Oh, sorry, what are you saying? If we are doing a meta analysis on this uh, research question, so okay. the study design can't be a prospective cohort. It should be a retrospective cohort. Because these studies would also always uh, already have been done, and we are doing a meta analysis on that. So in that case, even your interventional studies would have already been done. So it's not about that. I mean, obviously, you would you will include the studies that have already been done and published only. Yeah. But what did they do? That is the question here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So they conducted in a prospective cohort manner or a case control manner. That is what we have bothered about. Oh. Okay. We are not. I mean, that's what I'm telling you. Even RCT should have been completed. No. Yeah, yeah. That is not even a question to be bothered about. Okay. You just see the methodology section of their study. Okay. 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 So uh, the next uh, uh, again uh, going by the same uh, principle. If you just see the next research question, what is the effect of artificial sweetness on the cardiovascular disease among the adults? So here the population will be adults. It's a very broad thing. Uh, uh, you you have to make your inclusion exclusion criteria for each of these components, like I showed for your previous example, uh, previous descriptive studies. So here the population will be adults. You have to define the adult population, gender wise, age group, or any exclusion criteria, any specific uh, you know uh, comorbidity has been excluded or included. So all these things should be explained clearly in your inclusion and exclusion criteria. Then comes your artif then your exposure. In this case, exposure is your artificial sweetness. Again, you have to explain whether you will take a specific type of artificial sweetener or everything, or whether you will take a, 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 you know artificial sweetness that have been included in the food, or whether you will be taking it as over or uh, added over by the particular population. So all these things comes under your inclusion and exclusion criteria description. Now the comparator group. So uh, the ones who did not use any artificial sweetness, uh, the population will become your con comparator group. Then outcomes is basically incidence of CBD, cardiovascular diseases. So this is how you will frame your PECO statement for observational analytical studies. So moving on, uh, this is just another, uh, uh, this one question, can my research question include both prevalence and risk factor of a disease together? You can do, the, but that will be two research question. You cannot combine the research question. You can put it for, you know, uh, for objective sake or uh, for descript descri in the description you can write together but when we are when you are working on you have to work it, work it as a two different research questions i hope that uh, answers that so moving on uh, moving to the pico uh, actual pico format for interventional studies uh, this is uh, actually the is it is this visible sorry is it uh, yes sir it up? yes sir so this is a this is a this is the PICO description. Actually, the, it has been given in description format. This is the description in the methodology part of that probiotics article. If you remember, I shared one uh, you know screenshot of the article which was published, uh, systematic review and meta analysis on the effect of probiotics on depression and anxiety. So that the uh, this is the article. Uh, this is the methodology section of that article where they have clearly exp explained the in PICO format. Can you appreciate patients? So they have included all the inclusion and exclusion criteria description under patient. Then intervention, which is I. What is the intervention? They have clearly mentioned any type of probiotic in any form, whether it is capsule, sachet, associated, whether it is given along with any pharmacological interventions or psychother psychotherapies are, are given alone. So that is the inclusion criteria. So they have excluded, they have mentioned the exclusion criteria where they have combined probiotics with prebiotics. So if they have combined uh, prebiotics with a dose of more than 2.5 gram with probiotics, they have excluded it for obvious reason that it will be a study on the prebiotic effect or combined prebiotic and probiotic effect. So this is how you will formulate your exclusion and inclusion. Similarly, they have, they have given explanation for comparison group, placebo only, or it can be active treatment. 
probiotic versus pharmacological or probiotic versus psycho psychological therapies so this is the comparison group they were comparing their intervention that is probiotics with then as you can see the outcomes it is mentioned under the last paragraph so the patient important outcomes are relief of depressive symptom anxiety and stress symptoms cognitive function adverse events and quality of life they have studied multiple outcomes and they have reported it this is a very big uh, systematic review and meta analysis so that is how they have taken multiple outcomes and if you can see at the top they have mentioned the study designs explicitly what are all the study study designs they will be including it so is it clear how to uh, make a pico uh, com pico statement for interventional studies even though we don't recommend interventional studies uh, at this level uh, for you uh, just for uh, you know showing you an example for a uh, pico statement of interventional studies i have shown this so is it clear yes i have a one question yes uh, 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 all the all the kind of studies uh, if we want to include for a meta analysis should be of the same nature means like if we take a case control study so all the study should be case control or means the study nature of the study should be same or they can also differ which we see, want see. to utilize for yeah. meta analysis yeah even in this case if you can see they have taken rcts and quasi rcts which means they are going for even non -random, non randomized controlled trials as well so accordingly your quality of evidence will also vary if you if you have taken only rcts then your quality of evidence will be very high but if you are mixing it with some low quality studies then your you know quality of evidence will uh, you know uh, will come uh, will be reduced or will be decreased see once you complete your meta analysis there is another higher level step called as grading your certainty of evidence whatever you are finding it you have to give uh, grading to grade to that there is a guidelines called as grade guidelines itself so th that grade guidelines actually looks into the quality of studies or the study designs which you have included if you have only included rcts for example if you are trying to find uh, some intervention of a particular drug or a particular uh, public health intervention and if you have included only rcts then the level the certainty of evidence which you are providing will be very high okay but if you are including or if you are uh, mixing it some quasi rcts or you are only with non randomized then your certainty of evidence will be low whatever may be your interpretation you would be saying that okay it has very high effect but then your certainty in saying so will be reduced okay got the point similar and it also has the hierarchy uh, uh, i hope i mean we'll try to uh, teach Uh, include this grade concept during the workshop uh, at this level you need not uh, i mean it, it you need not know about that but then just know that it will affect your certainty of evidence mixing the uh, you know uh, sorry mixing the designs especially the lower quality with the higher quality okay thank you so usually they will do separately only if you are including cohort studies one meta analysis for only cohort studies one meta analysis for rcts so there will be two okay. forest plots If you can okay. observe in the meta analysis some of the meta analysis i'll give you an example go back and search for meta analysis uh, ends uh, electronic nicotine delivery system and electronic non nicotine delivery system on smoking cessation go and search for this uh, this this one article by regina ld okay uh, the the first author in that probiotic journal probiotic article so she had uh, written one uh, one article on this ends effect of ends on nicotine uh, tobacco cessation so you will have they would have done separately for cohort studies and separately for rcts okay okay that is another way to address thank you so no yes sir regarding the study suppose uh, like uh, we are doing uh, prevalence related but we are taking cross sectional also cohort also case control so is it because uh, like we can uh, take so many uh, if we like uh, if the research papers are less so then we can take the multiple studies can we do that also do we need to mention like till what years we are going to include the uh, the studies Yes, uh, so I'll just answer. I'll answer your first question. I mean, second question first. If you can see uh, in the PPT which I shared, I don't know whether you noticed or not. Uh, I did not mention it actually. Is the PPT slide visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you see in the uh, under the study design there is one part called as geography, date of search, language. Can you see this? Yes, sir. 
यू हैव टू मेंशन योर स्टडी पीरियड ओके दैट इज शुड बी एक्सप्लिसिटली मेंशन इन दिस टेबल एंड यू हैव टू मेंशन व्हाट इज द ज्योग्राफी यू हैव इंक्लूडेड वेदर यू हैव इंक्लूडेड ओनली ग्लोबल आई मीन वेदर यू हैव इंक्लूडेड ग्लोबली और ओनली इंडिया स्पेसिफिक साउथ एशिया साउथ एशियन साउथ ईस्ट एशियन रीजन और लो और मिडिल इनकम कंट्रीज सो दो थिंग्स शुड ऑल्सो बी मैंशन सो हियर वी हैव सर्च फॉर आर्टिकल स्टिल डिसंबर फोर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू सो वॉट एवर द आर्टिकल्स दैट हैव बीन पब्लिश टिल दिस डेट वी हैव इंक्लूडेड एंड यू हैव यू शुड ऑल्सो मैंशन यूर लैंग्वेज रिस्ट्रिक्शन वेदर यू हैव चोजन ओनली इंग्लिश एज यूर लैंग्वेज फॉर चूजिंग फॉर इंक्लूडिंग द स्टडीज दैट इज ऑल्सो शुड बी दैट ऑल्सो शुड बी मैंशन Does that answer your question? Sir, so if the study is done in 1990s and also all are being uh, included. Yes. Uh, no. Uh, not necessarily that you are that you can set it. You can okay. set it. I'm just giving you an example that it should be mentioned clearly. Okay, sir. Uh, sorry to disturb you, Doctor Arvind. Uh, sir, this meeting will automatically end after 25 minutes. Uh, can you complete your okay, presentation? Okay. So my my per se my presentation is complete. So, if you have any doubts, you can ask. Yes, I have one question, sir. I have a question. Yes. May I ask, Doctor? Please, one, one by one. Please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is uh, Doctor Shikha. Uh, you are part of my group also. So, my mentor has given me a uh, psychiatry-based question. So, our question is: What is the effect of suicide prevention interventions in Indian population? so in this case uh, there when i was going through the articles there have been cohort uh, as well as like in schools they have done and uh, outcome will be ke if anyone uh, commits suicide or if it is prevented and there have been case and controls also ke a group has been no, uh, no, uh, what, what i don't understand is that if it is a intervention how is it a cohort the, no but uh, non random non randomized control trials or no so the thing is in a school uh, in a classroom they have been giving lectures to a group and then it will be followed and there have been studies where they have separated and made two separate groups and one group has been given psycho analytical like uh, met methods to cope and other has been not so will i be including both uh, like uh, in my study or only as you were explaining to the other person it would be better to pick one and uh, stick to that Uh, see, uh, first thing is that I would want to, you know, uh, clarify that yours is an interventional thing. Yes. Most probably it will be non-randomized control trial, quasi RCT. But okay. yours is a. You are saying that you are giving psychotherapy, right? This is not their routine yes. thing. Yes. Uh, no, like uh, uh, I mean, it is a, a social this thing where uh, they will uh, entire class or entire uh, they uh, a bunch of people in a factory. They will be going and giving them lectures and how to cope with it. And then they'll be cluster, cluster randomized trial, but again it's an intervention. Yes, sir. You so give it as a cluster. Okay. But again, it's an intervention, but then that is uh, totally out of context with regards to your question. But then, with regards to your question, yes, it would be better to identify one specific intervention. But you can you can do if if you are not finding adequate studies, you can do for overall thing, but that will have lot of heterogeneity. Yes. You cannot. You cannot apply the results while giving the recommendations. It will be very difficult. Okay. We'll be talking about heterogeneity in the coming classes. Okay. Sir. Uh, it will have huge heterogeneity. Okay. Thank you. Sir, I have a question. Hello, everyone. Yes. 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 Doctor. Yes. 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 Yes.
for a what do you can say for a pure meta analysis uh, i agree with you which will be having very high quality but oh. like i just showed you an example where they combined rcts and non rcts right yeah, so agree so, agree even way. even even in a simple even in a simple rct also see quasi rct is rct which is not which is practically rct but technically not an rct ha oh, yes right and the second point is because this again is getting uh, repeated many times that uh, old data or old study are we going to include or not and all that so again as far as my understanding goes meta analysis can be done for articles that have been published in 1950s also 40s also the only point is because the, the point that is confusing is because dr padi has repeatedly said 3 months 3 months so what we when when he says 3 months it only means that the journals who have published it in the last 3 months they will be interested in publishing a meta analysis on that because that is a current topic otherwise meta analysis can be done for like for example if if i want to study uh, or if i want to talk about uh, not uh, uh, what what we call as uh, uh, normal fat obesity uh, like the persons who do uh, 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 nahi okay, okay. Uh, let me let me let me just give an example from our you uh, know experience itself again from that oral manifestation study You know, one oh. of the study was from 1988. That was the earliest. Oh. Yeah, that is that is what I am saying. Okay, uh, when we say the only thing which months? the participants, only thing which you have to see is that whether it satisfy your PICO criteria. Exactly. Is so, it, it, is it will will journals be interested in publishing it? Uh, that is to identify the question. Now, But. to include which study or what time period? That is uh, generally it is suggested whether it satisfies. all your inclusion exclusion criteria for each component of pico because some of the early studies they would not have you know used a certain confirmatory test which you would have included in your uh, inclusion criteria in that way you can reject that study but per se I mean, I mean, yes uh, ideally it should include all the studies done in that topic okay. ideally a meta analysis should include all the studies done but then because all the studies cannot be included you can you have to define your own time period your own geography like i can say i am doing it in L lmics or i can do i am doing it in uh, south americas so yes, that is one thing you have time period your yes, geography should also be mentioned which uh, which which is a part of that table all, actually all, 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 all i can i i can do it in low socio economic yeah i mean it depends the so population any, actually, any inclusion the inclusion, inclusion criteria will be defined sorry sorry the inclusion doctor, criteria. that will that will go into your population actually yeah so <laughs> what what i am trying to say is inclusion criteria is you going to define what population <laughs> what time time place for your study yes okay yeah okay uh, so okay thank you dr vikram so dr isha Yes, you have read your yes. yes, sir. Sir, if my search topic is to study the effect of D dimer levels on the severity of COVID nineteen disease, so what will be D dimer, sir? Like levels? Hey, you are. I mean, this is uh, this is for I small. Group Hello, am I audible, Actually, sir? This, you are audible, but uh, this oh. is for the small group discussion. I mean, uh, if you have anything related to the. Yes. Uh, you know principles or cont uh, you know content we have discussed here that would be better or else i'll come to that later because we have limited time if anyone else has uh, any questions related to the topic we have discussed instead of specific research question of your group uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sir. sorry sir actually my internet connection was uh, like disconnected sir okay. uh, yes so i just this is dr isha right yes sir sir just okay, want yeah. what will be the d dimer if i want to check the d like compile the whole matter analysis on d dimer levels on severity of covid 19 disease so what will be the d dimer sir in pico statement pico it will be pico actually uh, exposure your exposure will you want to see the effect of d dimer levels on severity right no, no sir actually i want to check the serum d uh, d dimer levels in covid 19 patients okay okay then your uh, exposure will be covid 19 Okay, then your outcomes will be your D-dimer levels. 
okay sir okay thank so you it will sir. be a simple what you can say it will be a descriptive study okay <laughs> so your population and outcomes will be the only thing uh, okay. sir if i may uh, thank you sir hello yes uh, this uh, is doctor doctor venkat sir if i may add yes doctor vishal i believe what doctor vishal is trying to do is something like a uh, uh, predictive value of uh, d dimer on maybe mortality of covid 19 so it will be something like a diagnostic uh, study uh, summary of the situation diagnostic validity that will be diagnostic validity uh, yes sir in the sense this much cut off predicts this much mortality so there are uh, summary oh, arrows that, to your data uh, analysis also sorry, sir. sorry doctor uh, i lost you so um, these are like meta analysis which use summary roc curves sir so, Ah, uh, that will be higher level actually. That it won't be any more. It will not be you know descriptive or prevalence study anymore. Yeah, it won't be prevalence study. She is trying to go for something like a diagnostic or predictive. Uh, Is that what Dr. Isha, Isha are you trying to do? Dr. Isha. Most likely, that is what she is going to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, You are you are trying to say the predictive value, but you said that you want to see only the D-dimer values in COVID. Okay, anyway, let me just discuss, discuss on to your small groups, sir. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be better. Uh, so I think other phones are waiting. Doctor Annapurna, Doctor Annapurna, you have been ah, raising yes. the hand. Ah yes, ah uh, yes, sir. Uh, I just wanted to ask, like, data is already been published and analyzed. So how do we bring a twist to it to make it more uh, uh, novel or different? i mean the data is same so is it just that our interpretation is different or how is it sir how do we conclude sorry the data means what which data are you talking about our data of the patients or the trial patients or whatever whenever we are okay. doing this meta analysis we are collecting all the patient information from existing uh, or already published uh, articles yes. yes so yes so uh, Majority of the conclusions, so the authors only would have made it. So how? how... No, the, see, the the point of meta analysis is that there will be multiple studies by multiple authors, and uh, there will be conflicting, uh, you know, findings as well, or they may be same or different findings. We are trying to find only the overall effect. What is the actual overall effect? That is the point of this uh, meta exercise, whole exercise itself. So, if uh, there are already meta analysis uh, existing, so then how do we do? We have to change the topic, or how is it so? On the no, it's better to change the topic, or else you have to go for you have to identify what is the limitation in theirs. They would not have. That's what I was explaining. They their methodology would have been very poor. Uh, quality of assessment they would not have done of the studies. Their extraction, uh, you know, method will be by single author. So there will be a lot of methodological issues. You can okay. try to. Uh, You know, rectify them, and you can build your case. Okay. But however, uh, uh, it's it's very difficult because journals themselves they don't accept those things these days. Okay. But uh, uh, it's better to go for a uh, uh, next question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, uh, yes, Doctor Surikant. Surikant, or Doctor Udrish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, just uh, after I define uh, my research question. And then dividing it to and into the peco, uh, what is the significance of dividing my thesis question into peco, sir? In what way it will help me? Yeah, uh, I have. Uh, that's a good question. I have uh, actually explained one part of it. One thing is to <clears throat> build your search strategy. Okay. You know, uh, you uh, systematic search. Uh, the word systematic means you have to search systematically and extract the identify the study systematically. That is what it is. And the first step is building the peco. Where uh, you include the you you formulate your inclusion exclusion criteria, and based on this inclusion and exclusion criteria, you will you will create a thing called a search strategy. Search strategy is very important because this is how this is this what you can this is a mechanism or this is a formula which you will give as an input to the search engines. Search engines means the databases which we will be using to extract our studies: PubMed, Scopus, Cochrane, Sinal. Sci Info. These are all some of the databases. Okay, so in order to build the search strategies for these databases, we need to have this inclusion and exclusion criteria. So this is one use at the stage of formulating or at the protocol stage. Now, yes, once you have identified the studies, you have to extract the data, right? 
So yes. you will be extracting the data or you will be checking the first and foremost, you have to check the eligibility of the studies. There again, you will use this PICO statement, PICO criteria to know, okay, whether this study has, is including only this population uh, using this intervention, this comparison and this outcome. Okay, so in order to see the eligibility as well as uh, after that, extracting the data also, you will extract the data according to this format only, PICO format only. And, uh, and uh, study designs not necessarily be prospective. All studies you can include, right, sir, in the search engine? Uh, no, initially, initially, you, you I mean, uh, when you are including, it will be there. Then we can apply certain filters. Okay. For example, if you want to know whether already only meta, whether meta analysis or systematic review has been conducted or not, there are filters in PubMed. If you just apply that filter, and if you want to have only meta analysis, systematic reviews published. You will be able to get that those filters. And sir, what what where interventions comes in this PICO thing, sir? Which all the studies are done. I am only analyzing. So where is the role of this intervention? No, no. Inter again, PICO is for that that study only. You are not analyzing. You are you sorry. You are not intervening. You want to make sure that okay whether that study has done this intervention or not. That is where you will use this PICO. You will apply this people in their methodology and check. Okay. I think this question is repeating again. See, basically, PICO does not mean that you will be conducting the primary research. You will be using this PICO and test whether the primary research, which you will include in your meta analysis, has been conducted in this, uh, including all these components or not. Yes, yes. Sir. Uh, Dr. Udresh? Uh, good evening, sir. So just a small yes. query, uh, we are planning to do a meta-analysis on prevalence of anemia in obese children and the association and its association in the same population. So these will be two different meta-analysis or we can, or, uh, we can so do it. So in association in the same population means? Uh, association of anemia in obese children and okay, prevalence okay. of anemia in obese children. It's a two different questions. First thing is, what is the prevalence of anemia in obese children? Hello. 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 Am I audible now? Am I yes. audible now? Yes. Okay, sorry. Yes. Okay, there was a call. Sorry. Uh, so as I was explaining, and in fact, uh, what are the risk factors in itself is a very broad thing. Yes, sir. So that is why we are taking just one, uh, like uh, prevalence of anemia in obese children. And what is the uh, is there uh, any association? Alternatively, I would suggest, uh, I mean, uh, that uh, risk factor question can be framed. What is the effect of obesity on anemia? Yes, so like, like, it, whatever, like the same uh, meta analysis, can it have two research questions or should it have only one? Doctor, you can have any number of research questions, but the quantum of effort or the quantum of uh, you know work you have to put will double. I mean, if not double, at least it will increase by 50 percentage because some study the study some studies would have reported only prevalence okay yes. some study and they were not necessarily everything will be overlapping no so then you have to do yes. a different search at all so strategy will be different okay it is a two meta analysis as far as i am concerned so it would be better if we like if we study it as two different uh, meta analysis instead of yes. uh, keeping it as one yes definitely okay thank you so much sir. i would say take take one question the prevalence question Okay. Uh, do the meta analysis, understand the whole process, then immediately after completing this, go for the second one. Oh, thank you so much. Sir, uh, I have a question. Like, uh, this is Dr. Divjot. Uh, just Dr. I think there are other two persons are waiting. Okay. So, Dr. Ankit, just raise have... your hand. Yes. Dr. Hello. Yes, hello. I have a one question regarding the P component of PICO. Uh, for example, yeah. if if we are looking for a, a effect of drug doses on a range of populations, so uh, if if there are multiple studies which have been conducted in different continents or different countries, can we include them all for a meta analysis or not? Means. If some study has been uh, conducted on Africa, some has been conducted on Northeast Asia, or some means uh, something is happening. Doctor, population, popul that again depends on your research question. Whether you want to restrict your, you know, uh, uh, you know, findings to only the Southeast Asian region, 
or low middle income countries again this was discussed uh, uh, if you want to restrict it then you have to you, you have to include those studies only so if we okay. want to if we want to do for the worldwide you know like uh, uh, like for global global analysis yes. so then we can include yes. all isn't it yes yes geography yes. you have to mention that it is global thing so thank you next dr bandan jyot ko Yes. Yes, Dr. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, we want to uh, do. Uh, actually, we uh, we have just uh, prepared our research question, and uh, our research question is on uh, stillbirth, uh, prevalence of stillbirth in India and or low middle income uh, class countries. So, so can we do that? Uh, can we do the meta analysis on that? Or uh, uh, research question be uh, jo hai ye bhi uh, December 12 mein ye ek uh, recent study hai still birth pe to hum uh, still birth pe kar sakte hain sir to prevail still birth se nahi i cannot answer directly to this uh, like i said yes, you have to apply the whole criteria you have to do yes. some short search and you have to refine it you can yes. do a study in anything or you cannot do in anything that again depends on some somewhat you know basic research so yes. i cannot answer to this directly Oh. so we uh, we i just want to refine my research question uh, I, i want mean, to work in stillbirth only it's better if you can discuss this in your small group if still okay. you are not able to uh, find a solution then we'll take it up later uh, okay thank you, you. Uh, sir yeah, i wanted to ask if not certain, yeah like this is your uh, question right can studies yeah, not yeah. satisfying pico be included or they would be excluded then from it obviously it will be excluded okay so if they are not this satisfying is for actually you will use this it's like a checklist when you are uh, finding when you are uh, when you want to whether you want to include or exclude a study okay. this pico will act as a checklist okay thank you so uh, if there's nothing else anyway the meeting will be closing in couple of minutes so i hope uh, i was able to clarify some uh, i mean clarify most of the doubt Sir, one question, please. Sir, one question. Sir, ask one question. Yes. Sir, one question, please. Uh, a hand. Uh, doctor, I think there are multiple questions. You can post it in the group as well in the WhatsApp group. Anyway, we can. Uh, we are taking the questions regularly there. That's not an issue. So, so sir, regarding the Prospero registration, sir, many of the co questions that they are asking in the Prospero registration, uh, Doctor Padi said that it will be discussed today, sir. So. when we will discuss about no, that prospero now. registration you have a proper prospero registration class tomorrow okay okay thank you and actually pico is the important thing other things will also be you know covered now by now i mean uh, at, uh, by the time you uh, know by the same time tomorrow uh, before the class you should be ready with your pico the whole inclusion exclusion thing that is the point then you can just apply in the prospero registration other or administrative you know requirements uh, you know the collaborators those things will be asked in that uh, sorry dr arvind sorry to interrupt you sir uh, this session will automatically end after yeah, two yeah, minutes yeah. so we can take more doubts in the whatsapp group thank you for the yeah, that, uh, presentation yes, today yes. and uh, thank you for uh, to all for joining the session we will we'll end this session now Okay so thank you all thank you doctor and thank you all thank you thank you thank, thank, you. thank, thank you sir thank you sir uh you can leave the meeting i'll try to share the recording with you as soon as possible thank you so much